Hello everyone. Thank you for joining today for this presentation on the latest ICD-10 CM updates for the year 2023. This is a three-part series and we will cover the updates in a chapter specific format, which will make it easy for everyone to understand the important updates for the year 2023. So this is the first part of the updates series and we will cover the first five chapters from ICD-10 CA. Majority of the updates are from these first five chapters, the infectious and parasitic diseases, neoplasms, diseases of the blood and blood forming organs, endocrine, nutritional and metabolic diseases, and the mental, behavioral and neurodevelopmental disorders. These are the five chapters where majority of the, uh, of the updates are focused on for this year. We will also talk about each of these chapters individually along with the guidelines that have been updated. I'm Vinay Kumar and with over 20 years of experience in the US healthcare industry, I have been part of different projects and departments which include medical coding, medical billing and client servicing. I am a certified from both AHIMA and AAPC and I have also trained many professionals in medical coding, helping them gaining knowledge and also getting their certifications completed. So the agenda for this uh, meeting is like the updates for the 2023 on the ICD-10 CM. We will review the changes for 2023, including the addition of new codes, deletions and updates in the guidelines and also conventions where wherever there are changes for the ICD-10 CM. We'll have an uh, we'll look at uh, take an uh, you know uh, update on the summary of the new codes and also the guidelines as well. Okay, so the Centers for Disease Control has issued the 2023 ICD-10 CM updates, which include a total of 1176 new codes, 28 revised codes, and 287 deleted codes for 2023. These 2023 ICD-10 CM codes should be used for inpatient discharges occurring from October 1st, 2022 through September 30, 2023 and also for patient encounters occurring from October 1st through September, 20, uh, September 30 of 2023 for the outpatients. So, just as a summary, this year, the focus is primarily on these categories of codes, including dementia, endometriosis, maternal care for fetal disorders, certain head injuries, and social determinants of health. These are the areas where majority of the changes, new codes and guidelines have been introduced for this year. We'll talk about these in detail in the following slides. We'll also look at the changes by each chapter of the ICD-10 CM and I'll try and cover all the important updates throughout this presentation. For the first chapter, infectious and parasitic diseases. Coding candida candidiasis now has two codes. Candidiasis is actually an infection caused by yeast, which is a type of fungus called candida. Uh, that normally lives on the skin and inside the body, such as the mouth, throat, gut, and vagina. And usually this does not cause any problems as such. Candida can cause an infection if conditions change inside the vagina that encourages growth. That's where candidiasis of vulva and vagina comes into picture. Now, this condition is usually seen and treated in an outpatient setting in majority of the patients. So for candidiasis, this year, the change in the codes is that code B37.3, which was used for candidiasis of vulva and vagina until now, has been expanded for additional specificity into two new codes. This is for this year, from October uh, 1st, 2022. One code is for acute candidiasis of the vulva and vagina, code B37.31. And the other code is for chronic candidiasis of the vulva and vagina, which is code B37.32. So these two codes for candidiasis. Also, for the 
Chapter 1 Infectious and Parasitic Diseases. There is one update in the guidelines for hemolytic uremic syndrome along with HIV. So, for all HIV related conditions, the guidelines stated code B20 for the HIV should be listed as the primary diagnosis and then code for any underlying uh, condition should be sequenced next. This was the previous guideline. However, this is an exception to hemolytic uremic syndrome if it is associated with HIV disease. So code D59.31 for hemolytic uremic syndrome should be coded as the primary diagnosis followed by B20 for the HIV. This is only an exception to the hemolytic uremic syndrome along with HIV. This is one guideline change for this chapter. And another one similar to uh, the HIV is for the sepsis. So typically for a diagnosis of sepsis, the appropriate code for the underlying, underlying systemic infection is coded first, followed by se severe sepsis and any organ failure. However, the updated guideline specifically for hemolytic uremic syndrome, if it is associated with sepsis, then code D59.31 should be reported as the primary diagnosis and then code for the sepsis as a secondary diagnosis. This is the second area where the guideline has changed for chapter 1, specifically for hemolytic uremic syndrome associated with HIV and associated with sepsis. Now, chapter 2, neoplasms. So, for chapter 2, neoplasms, a total of 11 codes were revised and the only changes are for uh, code categories C84.4 and C94.6 where the word elsewhere has been added to the code descriptions. Other than this, no other changes for chapter uh, 2 for the neoplasms when it comes to the code updates. But for the guidelines for chapter 2, there is one guideline updated for neoplasms. If the malignancy is chiefly responsible for occasioning the patient's admission or encounter and the treatment is directed at the primary site, quote the primary site as the principal diagnosis. The only exception is if the patient is admitted for chemotherapy, immunotherapy or external beam radiation and one of these is the reason for the admission, the appropriate code from category Z51 should be assigned as the principal diagnosis. Additionally, code for the malignancy or any complications. This is one guideline updated for this year uh, for neoplasms. Now, chapter 3, diseases of the blood and blood forming organs. Three categories of codes were updated for this chapter. Hemolytic uremic syndrome, von Willebrand's disease and non-immune heparin induced thrombocytopenia. For the first condition, as stated in chapter 1, hemolytic uremic syndrome has been expanded, to, uh, expanded into four codes, D59.30 for unspecified hemolytic uremic syndrome, D59.31 for infection-associated hemolytic uremic syndrome, D59.32 for hereditary hemolytic uremic syndrome, and D59.39 for other specified hemolytic uremic syndrome. The second category of codes that were further expanded are for von Willebrand's disease. This is a common bleeding disorder in which the blood does not uh, clot properly. So these codes provide further specification about the type of the disease such as type 1, type 2a, type 2b, type 2m, type 2n and type 3. This is the expansion for von Willebrand's disease. It identifies or specifies the type of the disease. Now one important note to remember is that all these conditions are classified as CCs, okay, comorbidities and complications in the ICD-10 CM tabular which means these codes may affect the DRG selection, the DRG values, okay, when assigned along with the primary diagnosis. This is for the von Willebrand's disease.
The third set of codes that were expanded are for heparin induced thrombocytopenia from category D75.82. These codes specify whether heparin induced thrombocytopenia is non immune mediated versus immune mediated. And you also have the other specified and unspecified codes for this category. Okay, so D75.822 is immune mediated heparin induced thrombocytopenia, whereas D75.821 is for non immune heparin induced thrombocytopenia. This is the expansion for this category. Now, there is a special instruction for these codes at D75.82, which states to use additional codes for adverse effect of heparin. That would be an additional code apart from these codes wherever applicable. So this is the third category of codes updated for chapter 3, non-immune heparin induced thrombocytopenia. Chapter 4, endocrine, nutritional and metabolic diseases. So for chapter 4, there was only one code E34.3 for constitutional short stature. Now this code has been expanded to include further specificity such as short stature due to endocrine disorder or due to insulin like growth factor deficiency or resistance or other and unspecified causes of short stature. The other update in chapter 4 is for coding the condition acidosis. This condition had only one code E87.2 until now for unspecified acidosis. However, acidosis now has four new codes for unspecified acidosis, acute metabolic acidosis, chronic metabolic acidosis and other acidosis. Note that all these codes are categorized as CC conditions or comorbidities and complications which means that they would impact the selection of the DRGs if they are coded. So the guideline from 2022 uh, for this one stated that code Z79.4 should be assigned when patient is treated with insulin and code Z79.84 should be assigned for long term use of oral hypoglycemic drugs. And the third code was Z79.899, which was used for injectable non-insulin anti-diabetic drugs. These guidelines are now updated and a new code Z79.85 for long-term use of injectable non-insulin anti-diabetic drug has been added. So as an example, if the patient is treated with both oral hypoglycemic drugs and also injectable non-insulin anti-diabetic drug, we have to assign code Z79.84 for the oral drug and then code Z79.85 for the injectable anti-diabetic drug. This is another guideline change for endocrine, nutritional and metabolic diseases. Now comes the actual chapter where majority of the changes have been uh, introduced, dementia specifically. So chapter 5. Mental, Behavioral and Neurodevelopmental Disorders. This chapter has significant updates this year and has a total of 83 new codes that were added. Majority of the new codes in this chapter are related to coding dementia. Expansion of these codes includes the type of dementia such as vascular dementia or dementia in other diseases classified elsewhere and unspecified dementia. These codes are also further expanded to identify the severity of the dementia such as whether it is mild, moderate or severe. And furthermore, these codes also now include further specificity of the dementia such as whether the dementia is with agitation or whether the dementia is with behavioral disturbances or if there are psychotic disturbances or uh, if there are mood disturbances or whether the dementia is uh, you know, only uh, associated with anxiety. The linkage now, uh, the linkage for all these conditions along with dementia. So, the linkage between the dementia and the other conditions, such as the agitation or mood disturbances, for example, can be established when you look at the main terms and subterms under the main term dementia. So, if you go to the alphabetic index, look at dementia as the main term. Okay, and then under that, if you look up the subterm, if you see the dementia is linked the, with, with the term subterm with so dementia under that with and under that if you see agitation 
then the provider need not specifically state the relationship between these uh, codes. So you have to code it as a combination code. Okay, so the alphabetic index is what will define or help you understand whether they should be coded as interrelation, uh, interrelated conditions or not. Use the combination codes in all such cases where these are linked with the subterm with in the alphabetic index of the code book. This is the point I am trying to make. Okay. Also, remember to read the instructions in the tabular list for code first and use additional code instructions for all the dementia category of codes. Many of these codes have such instructional notes which would be important in code selection and also sequencing the codes properly. So make sure that you read the instructions in the tabular list once you pick up a final code. Now, this is the code updates for dementia. As I said, they have been further expanded to identify the severity and also other conditions which are related to dementia. And the type of the dementia has also been expanded. So go to the alphabetic index, look up dementia and also go to the tabular list and look up all the codes for the dementia that have been updated for this year. I've given you some samples here. F01.50 is for vascular dementia, not otherwise specified. F01.511 is vascular dementia, unspecified severity, along with agitation. Similarly, F01.518 is vascular dementia of unspecified severity with other behavioral disturbance. So as I said, this is just a sample of the codes that you are looking at here. Now, guideline updates for Chapter 5, Mental, Behavioral and Neurodevelopmental Disorders. So this is a completely new guideline for dementia which will help in capturing the severity of the dementia based on provider documentation. Selection of severity is based on provider's clinical judgment and codes for severity should be selected only when documented by the provider. Otherwise, an unspecified severity code should be assigned for inpatient settings if the patient is admitted with dementia at one level of severity and during the hospitalization, if the patient progresses to a higher level of severity, then the code for the highest severity should be assigned. Okay, this is the uh, guideline that has been updated for specifically for dementia and the category of uh, codes for dementia. Now, the second set of codes that received an update in this chapter are for alcohol and drug usage. These codes now include additional information such as the severity and also whether the patient is in remission. Previously, there was no code that would identify if the patient was in remission. So if you look at F10.90, this is alcohol use, unspecified and uncomplicated. But the same code F10.91 is alcohol use unspecified in remission. So these in remissions were not available previously and uncomplicated is something which is newly introduced into the code sets. Now, I have listed the uh, links here where you can find the comprehensive list of ICD-10 CM files for the year 2023. You'll find the updated guidelines here, the complete list of codes along with the descriptions will be found here and all the other relevant data in these links can be found like the POA indicators that have been updated will, can also be found in this uh, in these links. Just go there and look at all the uh, files that you have so that you get all the resources that you need uh, for the latest updates of ICD-10 uh, CM. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and support the channel so I can make a lot more videos that would be helpful for all the coders, whether experienced coders or beginners. I'll cover the other chapters in the next video and please let me know in the comments of this video if you like the content and the presentation and also if you need anything specific that needs to be covered, please let me know in your comments. I'll definitely make, I mean put in my efforts to create one for you. Thank you. This is the end of the part one of the ICD-10 CM updates for 2023. We will come up with the next video which will talk about the other chapters in part two. Stay tuned. Thank you.